The following podcast has been brought to you by Audible.com. Sign up now using the URL audibletrial.com forward slash TTV to get a free audiobook of your choosing. We recommend Brick by Brick, how Lego rewrote the rules of innovation and conquered the global toy industry. You may recognize this as one of the sources we use in our show, Bionicle Autopsy. Remember, that's audibletrial.com forward slash TTV. Enjoy the show. Five, four, three, two, one, sink. sink. Everybody. Mardi Gras! Ah, oh, gosh dang it! It's oh, been so God. long. You know, Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 119 of the TTV podcast. The legitimate 119, not yes. the bootleg one. Not yeah, the one so in the highly themselves. suspect hotel. Yep. 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 It this is, is the first podcast we've recorded in a very long time. I know. Correct. Uh, we recorded that one at Comic Con, which we weren't able to release. We recorded the second one at Comic Con that we released uh, yesterday and then made private because it sucked. <laughs> so, yes, this I mean, is the first. Oh, yeah, and then um, LJ Vin and the others did At The Week. Oh, but... yeah. I don't even know what I don't. Yeah, I don't really know it, either. It means, as, it as the host are away. Uh, yeah. And, um, and then there was, uh, like, two other podcasts we recorded in that interim between Atha and, like, the last one before that that we never released because it took too long to edit. <laughs> and oh, it was yeah. not just take too long to edit. The video stopped, like, halfway, and your mic wasn't working for half of it. And my Little mic, means me and Nessa were sharing. And... No, that, that that was for uh, the hotel podcast, not the one I was talking about. No. I was yeah. talking about the one before Atha. Yeah, we, we had a Atha. guest. Oh. I feel sorry for the guest. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my. Lego I forgot master. about that one. It's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll have, have him on again. on, and he was actually a really good yeah. guest too. So it's a shame that we weren't able to get the episode up. Yeah, we'll have him on again. It's yeah, okay. we'll, yeah, we need to have him on. If again. you're out there, like a master, we'll we'll have you we we'll have you on again. <laughs> we'll and there was a lovely you. argument about Star Wars at the end too. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I zoned no. out for that. Really? Did we miss oh, that? Of course episode? Did. What happened to it? Did that? I'm sorry, it it it, it, it got delayed in editing, and by the time we were going to put it up. All the news and stuff and the topics we were talking about were old. Right, we we're talking yeah. about all the rumors and bionicle stuff that had happened, and now it was. I mean, Comic Con. We, so. we could probably still put it up as a forum exclusive, but I don't know if it'd be worth going back and actually finish editing it. Yeah, I doubt it. Considering our workload, you know, so people like, can listen to it and stuff. Yeah, but like like I said, we'd have to go yeah. back and edit it, finish editing it, and like we already have our hands f- filled with a bunch of other stuff, so I'm not oh, sure. Yeah. If it'd be Should we do the introductions now? <laughs> yeah. No. So, without further ado, I am Messinac. I am Vardaran. I'm LJ. I'm Kahi. I'm Viper. I'm a recovering cannibal. And I'm Trooper, and I'm still alive. <laughs> Great. And once again, this is TTV episode 119, and this is going to be a jam-packed one. Uh, because we have a lot of stuff to talk about, both in the realm of New York Comic Con and also Pinocchio some sequel. interesting stuff that's happened since. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I got like three weeks worth of things to talk about. I know. About. Yep. So without I mean, further ado, we are not going to waste any time at all. We are going to get right into it with an important issue that came out of New York Comic Con, which I think you know we've done our best to post clarification and our public stance on it on our website and on forums but we've yet to talk about it in a video, and the certain people in the community may know about this, others may not, so <coughs> it's important pay attention. Right. <laughs> the, I, like, Takuma, uh, Takuma has no clue. This yeah. is the Kanohi Vahi controversy from New York Comic Con. I, I I'd like to take a hold is. of this one. Right. Yes, okay, Kai, this, gonna, was, this was your deal. This was, this yeah, was kind of my deal. Don't screw right. it up again. Uh, okay. okay, really quickly. Basically, just overview of what the issue actually is. In brief words, we stated that b- the new Bionicle was a soft reboot, and we've got reason for that, but that is where the controversy right. lies. People do not actually agree that it is a soft reboot. Right. So, 
Take it off. Okay, so here's what happened. Uh, I was on the show floor, and I talked to Jordan Paxson, who's you know one of the he's the main uh, product specialist for Bionicle. And uh, I asked him several questions. He was the guy that you're supposed to ask questions to. So yeah, he he was he was standing there in front right. of the display for anyone right to for anybody talk to talk to. Him. <laughs> so that, I, that was his that was his job at Comic Con yeah. to talk to fans. Yeah, was a, it's it, this was his job to talk to people. So I asked him at the thing uh, at the panel. I was like, hey, so there's been a lot of controversy on the fandom. Is this a continuation uh, or is this a reboot? And uh, because I, at this point, I am pretty set on a hard reboot. I, I personally, I want a hard reboot. I want to get that out of the way so, like, you know, I didn't necessarily want to lead him towards a certain conclusion of mine. It was just something that happened. So I asked him that, and he says, well, I wouldn't exactly call it a reboot. Or no, he said, I didn't, I don't exactly want to call it a reboot. Right? Yeah, he said, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to call it a reboot. Right. That, that was his exact right. words. So, I don't really want to call it a reboot. Uh, so I asked him then, and I was like, so would, because, you know, so like not exactly a reboot means that there, he's not saying it's a continuation. That means there's some part of a reboot. So I said, like, hey, so would you, like, compare it to, like, a, like a soft reboot, of, like, some connection to old canon, like in the Star Trek movies? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, the Star Trek movies are actually a really great example of what we're trying to go for. And then he was like, yeah, you're, you're going to find out more about it, you know, later okay. on. Okay, really quickly, actually, because you did kind of mix some things here. We talked to him twice during Comic-Con. Right. One time before the panel and one time after the panel. Right. The first time we talked to him, we asked him if it was a reboot or not. He said... Uh, I don't really want to call it a reboot. And then he said, remember back in Legends of Metro Nui how there was something that Vakama created? We were like, what is that? He's like, well, you know, there was like a mask of time. And it was like, oh, right, right. And we didn't really ask much further. We were kind of confused. Because I remember after that, in the, the initial interview, we were like, uh, what does that even mean? I, I don't know. I guess it's a soft reboot, though. Yeah. Then we went to the panel. And during the panel... The Lego, uh, the yeah, Bionicle right. team yeah, right. made it very, very apparent that this is going to be a reboot. They started the panel off by stating, all right, guys, this is a reboot. So we were like, huh. Well, that kind of conflicts with what Jordan Paxton told us, right? So after the panel, we went to talk to him again. We were like, so um, they mentioned that it was a reboot. Are you sure that it's a soft reboot? And he was like, all I'm going to say is that, yes, remember Legends of Metro Nui? The Mask of Time. Remember how there was something off about it? How it was, how there was something interesting. And we were like, uh, yeah, I guess it, uh, it, it only uh, covered half his face. Yeah. He was like, yes, as if it was only half of a mask. Oh. oh. Now, beforehand, I had asked about, uh, I had asked him, like, you know, mentioned Akimu and, you know, Mata Nui and how Mata Nui is kind of out. And he was like, yeah, you know, you know, the new universe and everything. And, but then I, so I, I, I kind of on a whim, I asked, hey, are the, are these Toa, the same Toa as in the original canon. And what he said is like, he said, oh, I can't say anything, but then he brought up stuff with the Vahi and he was also, we also started talking about time travel. And I, I mentioned specifically time trap in 2005. I was like, oh yeah, there's that, you know, that a bit of time travel that happened in 2005. And he was like, yeah. So up until this point, uh, as far as, as far as, far as I'm concerned, I was, the, the fact that it was a soft reboot was kind of like mostly... Right. Confirmed to me, like there wasn't any reason for me to think that there it he, wasn't. He pulled out the strings towards forming the idea that this was a soft reboot. He confirmed that time trap was a thing. He talked about the Va. He he himself brought up the Vahi. We didn't ask yeah. him about that. He brought that up. Now, I do also want to mention that we're not trying to get anybody. We're not necessarily saying it's his fault for providing this information, but it's. Very, I want to make it clear that like we didn't just want to say something and then we just twisted somebody's words to do it. We this is. Uh, exactly. We, we we literally asked him right. twice to make sure if, this is okay. accurate if it's, information. If it's if it is if it is wrong, it was just miscommunication on both sides, and we didn't both of us didn't understand what we were talking about. Yeah, it's, it's also highly likely that there might have been some miscommunication right. between the Bionicle team as well, and he might have misunderstood a bit of information here, and it actually is a hard reboot or not. Right. But either way, from what we gathered from talking to him, this was a soft reboot. Right. And now, as I was saying. After the panel, we went to talk to him again just to confirm whether our suspicions were true or not. And once again, he brought up the Vahi. Like, he gave us more detail about how the Vahi was only half a mask. He brought that up on the second time we talked to him, that it was half a mask. It was incomplete. And then Kai was like, okay, so would you say that this is kind of like the Star Trek movies, in a sense? And he was like, yes, the Star Trek movies are a very good example. All right, so the main thing I want to drop by is that, like, he... 
okay, the basically the reason why we're clarifying this at all is that uh, a lot of other members, uh, some of them from Easy Power, some of them from Resurgence, came out and they said that this isn't true. It's not a it's not a soft reboot. It is a uh, it's a, it's just a hard reboot. It's like a hundred percent a hard reboot, and we have no reason to believe otherwise. So now I will I will admit we we mostly only talked to to Jordan Paxson. We did not have time, or I, specifically I did not have enough time yeah. to talk to a lot of people. And the people that did clarify it, I think it was DV and some other people. They also they were you know, they had like an actual camera rig. Not all the stuff we talked about. We didn't we were not able to get on video. The audio was messed up on some of them, and some of the video died. But BZ Power had a lot of video interviews you can see up on their channel. They talked to a lot more people from the team. So. I, as soon as this happened, I pointed towards Van and I clarified because they had, they were a more relevant source at that point. They had talked to more people than we had, and that was a more, that's just a more reliable thing, just objectively. You know, if you have multiple sources confirming something, that's just how it is. So, the, I guess the main thing we wanted to clarify and put before that is what happened, what made us believe that. We're, we didn't want it to make it appear that we were intentionally trying to mislead people. And obviously, not only is time travel brought up, and not only is time travel, you know, like a big deal between old canon. The Star Trek movies themselves has a thing about uh, Spock from oh, the yeah, old universe yeah, it, time traveling and becoming a part of the new universe. And exactly, if you aren't aware, of, like what actually happens in the Star Trek movies, right. that is it. that's that's one of the things that happened. Old Spock from New Leonard Nimoy from the original Star Trek series is in the new movies with the, exactly yeah in a new universe it, and everything. And it needs to be specified that. Like, it, it isn't just old Spock meeting young Spock. It is literally Leonard Nimoy from the old universe Spock meeting the new universe Spock. Right. And it, it makes it clear that it's, it's time travel and there's two separate universes. And that's what's going on. Now, it, I, I do not yeah, the, deny... The events that happen in Leonard Nimoy's Star Trek are different than the events that happen right. in... um. Zachary Quinn? Yeah, Zachary, Zachary Quinn. Quinn's Star Trek. And not only that, there is, like, there, there's points in the second movie where Zachary Quinn actually goes up and asks Leonard Nimoy, hey, what did you do when this guy came around? Like, you know, have you ever heard of him, and what did you do to defeat him? So, the, I mean, it's it's very clear it's a new universe uh, from the the what was shown at Comic-Con. Whatever is happening in Bionicle involves a new universe. It is not like, right. it's not a continuation in the way that, like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not in the future sphere of matter or anything. It is 100% in a new universe. That is something that needs to be clarified yeah. really quickly. But, so, really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run over exactly everything that we just said real quick, okay. so in case you got lost. Right. TLDL. Yeah, T TLDL. Basically, TR. first time we talked to Jordan Paxson, he said he doesn't want to call it a reboot. He also mentioned that there was something to do with Avahi. And we were like, cool, it's a soft reboot. We go to the panel. They don't mention anything about be it being a soft reboot. They start the panel off by stating it's a reboot. A after the panel, we're a little confused. We go back to talk to Jordan Paxson. We're like, okay, so are you sure that this is a soft reboot? And he says, all I'm going to say is that the mask, of the mask of time was only half a mask, and it wasn't complete. Then we asked him, okay, so would you say that this is like the Star Trek movies? And he was like, yes, the Star Trek movies are a very good example. That is why we were led to believe that this is, in fact, a soft reboot. We asked him before. He said it was a soft reboot. We went to the panel. Now, Jordan Paxson is at the panel, okay? He was there when they said that this is a reboot. But, okay, they did. There was a thing. There's a snafu in the panel where they show a slide, and the guy says, uh, this is the Temple of Time. And then he kind of stops, and he's like, uh, th th and they just kind of move on. Like, there's a very audible pause in that thing. Notably, that that slide with the, t the Temple of Time is not in the slides posted up on Facebook later on of the New York Really? Comic -Con. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, Meso pointed that nope. out to me. It is not there. It is not there. Whoa. Okay, so yeah, that, that needs to be pointed out too. Okay. Yeah. I, there I was sure a slide out. with a temple of time at the panel when we were there. That is for sure. I remember Yeah, this. I know. I remember that. I remember specifically him saying the temple of time because it was like, oh, you know, I'll carry it of time. It was a so temple of time and then it showed the, the, the Toa <laughs> falling from the sky. Right. And, it, as well. Exactly. Or and something that, that similar to them. That is really interesting that they took that out of the slideshow posted on Facebook. It seemed like when the guy said he was like, oh, Temple of Time, it seemed like he was like, oh, wait, we, was that supposed to be in there? And, like, I just remember, I remember that point distinctly in the panel after he said that. So, I mean, hey, it, it could be much more subjective and it could be something, you know, that was just up to my perception. But it is noteworthy that that slide is not in. All the other slides made it into the Lego uh, Facebook page. All the other slides are there except for that slide. Yep. Just, yeah. Um, but yes, so like I said, we asked him first time, we got an answer, 
got a panel, got a different answer. We asked him a second time to clarify, and he gave us a better answer. Basically, what it all leads up to is from what we gathered, this is, in fact, a soft reboot. However, it's still be being handled as if it's a hard reboot. Right. At, at no point is it being a soft reboot actually affect how the new universe is going to be handled. No matter what, it is still a hard reboot in that sense. This new universe still has nothing to do with the old universe. However, I do believe that LEGO is intentionally leaving it, the origins of this new universe open for interpretation. And it is also noteworthy that the Toa have again lost their memories. That much was confirmed for us. The Toa, exactly. when they come up, they have lost their memories. Now, the memories of what? I don't know. They also arrived on Mata Nui with their memories lost. So, same thing could happen, you know, and they do have different personalities this time around. If you've read the bios on the, the LEGO page, they have different traits, they have person personalities, they have different stuff. Uh, attached Which to them. is something that can obviously happen if they've lost their memories. Right. Doesn't necessarily mean yeah. they're different people. Yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. The well, I do want to make clear that uh, the people, uh, mostly, you know, the people who have said that uh, this is, that what we've said is false, have said that the reason why it is, what was said to us was just under the assumption that, yes, we're going to be carrying elements from old canon. Like the Vahi, like Makuta, like the original Toa. And that doesn't necessarily that mean not the thing. That's not what we gathered. That's, not, what, that's not what we gathered. And, like, and I mean, not only was the whole time travel hint put in, the, the, main, the main thing that they used, the main franchise that they used as a comparison throughout the entire thing was Star Trek. And th this could be by complete, absolute coincidence, but Star Trek is yeah. technically a soft reboot. It does and have a time again, travel element, need... too, to it. Once again, I need to stress, we were not the people that brought up the Vahi. That was all right. him. And no, we, we, one... All we did was ask if this was a reboot, and he was like, I don't want to call it a reboot, and then he gave us a specific example of an artifact that might have translated from the original universe to this universe. In fact, I remember actually hearing him tell us the exact same thing to someone else while we were looking at the big, giant mask of creation Lego statue. And, yep, adapting yeah. chaos can verify. And yes, yeah, that yeah. was... We weren't the only people being told that. Additionally, we also were at the thing where uh, we, if you listen to any of the podcasts before New York Comic Con, we are very convinced it is a hard reboot. We are 100% convinced it is not a, between, you know, soft reboot, hard, uh, continuation, or hard reboot. We're very convinced it's hard reboot. There was no, going into it, I fully expected to be that. There was no reason for me to change until he said I wouldn't exactly want to call it a reboot. That, that's when like we started we asking questions. Right. Towards, it's not like we have a bias towards a soft right. reboot. Right. I, I don't try yeah. to lead questions. We didn't have confirmation bias where we're like, oh, he just said this and it means a soft reboot. I, up to this point, I really wanted a, a hard reboot. And it, it still could be a hard reboot, to be honest. We don't, we honestly do not have any idea of what's going on until the Bionicle story comes out. Exactly. However, what, that's come out and, you know, whatever it is. But yeah. We'll either However, yeah, we will, we will still continue to report on what we hear. Yeah. So well, that's all we were doing. We weren't trying to stir up controversy and state, oh, it's totally a hard read. There was, screw whatever anyone else says. There was one thing that was totally my fault. And I take full responsibility for this because uh, when someone asked me, if it, are you sure it's a hard reboot? I said it was the exact words you used. Soft reboot, reboot. These were the soft, the soft reboot were the words that we used and they agreed with. They did and you not also actually put it say under the confirmed facts section on our. I I also, I also okay I, I also did but at that point for me because I said is it a soft reboot and he said yes I assumed it was confirmed personally yes that is so true. right no I I do understand why people get uh like you know uh adamant about us you know doing that kind of thing but from my perspective and from everything that led us up to this point I just that, for me it was confirmed I'd asked the question and it had been answered so uh. You know, yep. and then we got hints to what could happen later on. I don't, I don't know. And I, I will be, I'm waiting for like, uh, mostly all of the set reviews to come out for me to make an, uh, update to that news article. So I can have, you know, the part two is going to clarify all that stuff and do that. That's why that article hasn't come out yet. But once all the set okay. reviews are done, I'm going to be doing a whole thing with that. But yeah, so like I, like we stated, we have been led to believe that this is a soft reboot. Uh, we understand that it's very clearly a hard reboot, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not a soft reboot. I still hold the belief that this is going to be handled as if it's a hard reboot, but le being intentionally left open for the fans to make their own story. I Correct. think that is specifically what they are trying to do. I don't think they want to close out the old universe. And this is kind of shown because they clearly, clearly understand that there was an old universe that people still were very attached to. Right, right. 
Yeah. They, they, made a lot they have a very time. clear understanding of that because they've taken a lot of inspiration from that, gone back and watched a lot of the source material, gone back and talked to a lot of the old people involved. I think they definitely understand that the old universe is a very important aspect of Bionicle, and I don't think they want to drop that. And Excuse with me. that being said, yes. I have one question. Kahi, well, I was about to open the floor at all of you to say what, what do you have to say, but go ahead. Oh, well, Kahi, you took full responsibility for your screw up with the whole facts thing, right? Uh, just with the tweet. I, my tweet was very misleading. Great facts thing too. Awesome. So Not I have the one facts. question. The facts, you just the facts said is not you just said you said earlier that um, you talked to Jordan Paxton and said that time travel was involved in time trap. Is that what you said? Uh, we talked about the time time travels was used, and I mentioned like something like time trap because that's when the mask of time was used as well. Okay, yeah, time travel has never been used in time trap. Then wasn't there a message? No, 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 no. Uh, from the that? future. Yeah, it was that was in time trap? Krakua, right? That's time travel. I guess I'm thinking sort of time of. travel as a person actually traveling through like. Uh, uh, oh, I stumped the whiz. There we go again. <laughs> no, 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 You didn't stump nothing. First of all, that was a vision, you know, in a, like a Cortana or whatever the stupid thing called. No, that doesn't, no. Cortana? Master Chief? Yeah, what? No. No. Oh, fuck! Oh, okay. Jeez! <laughs> uh, I don't know, LJ, I'm kind of on Kai's side there. Right. I, if, the, if there is distinct difference between different timelines and there's a connection between them, I would classify that as time travel. I know it's not necessarily a character traveling back in time or going to the he, future. But he but does say, I'm from the future, and is this is a message you need to understand. Combo? Yeah, there is still a very clear difference between two time, yeah, he, time frames Bakama being connected. Bakama isn't just seeing a vision of the future. Somebody is literally from the future talking to him. That is yeah. time travel. Yeah, I would, I would count that as time travel too. Well, shut up! You're not an expert! Who's an expert? Neither are you. Really, neither are you! <laughs> yeah, I am. No, alright, okay. alright. I, I well, will say, I totally forgot about the stinking Kratana. I wanted before we transitioned, now that all this has been clarified, I know Takuma and X hadn't even heard of this before. I haven't even watched yeah. Star Trek, making man. All this. <laughs> what do you make of these developments? What's your take? I mean, whether or not it's use... soft or hard or like mill or whatever floats your boat reboot, it's still a reboot and I'm just gonna wait and see what, what LA is. Yeah, exactly. It's not like yeah, it's gonna I mean, it's be not much gonna be so much of a difference. I mean, the sets are pretty. I mean, the setting is pretty. It's not Hero Factory, and you know, it's Bionicle, and <laughs> it's not Hero Factory whatsoever. It's not Galidor. It's actually Bionicle. Bionicle's coming back. Do you hear it? Bionicle's coming back? Yeah. So I'm pretty. Somebody I'm actually yeah. told me Bionicle's coming back, and I'm like, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. The only <laughs> real, yeah. the only real difference between the two is just. Is the old Semantics. canon trash now, mm -hmm. or is there is it still a thing? That's really it. Actually, I was just thinking the other day, has anyone else noticed that pepperoni seems to be getting thinner? Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the vine? So, dude, I dude, just went... yeah, I know, man. It's like they're, I guess pepperonis are getting themselves a hard reboot or something. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a no, pizza no, no, no. shop Var, at like Var two clarifying. in the morning. We don't know. We, okay, yeah, 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 all right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We don't the, know if pepperonis are getting a hard reboot or a soft reboot. Yeah, the, the, pe the pepperoni, pepperoni has come out. They're, they're said... leaving it open for older pepperoni fans to make their <laughs> own pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> but from what we've tasted, we think it's a hard reboot. Yeah. We think it's a new type of pepperoni. Takuma, <laughs> do you have any thoughts on this Vahi controversy? It sounds to me like another side effect of the information age. If that makes any sense. Wow. Wait a minute. Wow. <laughs> it's so a negative side effect of the information age. It's just, yeah, we get... Pretty much so the gist. We get so much stuff yeah. from different people now because everybody has access to information yeah, now. Yeah, it's the internet. Hmm. Yeah. So. Sorry for thinking yeah. about it. Close. <laughs> no, it's a good point. So recently, there's been a little bit more controversy. This, is, this episode's going to have a lot of that. Uh, this is just the Bionicle community for you, man. <laughs> the Bionicle community is so bad. No offense to any of you. Don't say that! Don't say no. that! Citation! No, TDB does, does not hold the same the opinions as Messina. Don't blame a fandom like for the community. Don't blame a fandom 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 for the community. Don't bl
There it is. There's so much controversy in the Bionicle fandom. Does there, there this is, happen elsewhere? There is an are there any other there. fandoms you guys are part of where this stuff happens? I will say, I talked to GSR recently about, like, the Ace Attorney fandom. And I was like, oh, so how much fandom does the Ace Attorney get? And he's like, uh, people that hate Apollo Justice and people that like the original trilogy. And that's most, <laughs> that, that's the big that's the big thing. DSP. And the Bionicle community has all this stuff. It's because... The Bionicle community is so multifaceted, there's so many elements to it on the creative side of things and on the official side of things. You guys have had so many debates and problems over the years just because of Sprite comic subculture. That's, that's the, actual, the actual fandom. Alright, so what's basically been happening is Greg, on a whim, on the LEGO message boards, the official LEGO message boards, has been canonizing several things. Of note, the name of the first Toa team being Toa Kordak, and Gold, the good guy, the Duracell promotional being Taragali Khan in set form. So he's kind of just been offhandedly canonizing small little itsy bitsy things. And some members on numerous different Bionicle fan sites and even just general Lego fan sites have been getting a little bit annoyed at this. Because well, I feel it's... the perception is that it's been kind of on the whim, offhand, you know, just randomly. Right, it's just perception. It's not actually like a, a confirmed speech yes. on the whim. So yeah. they've been getting annoyed at the small, trivial canonization of certain things, in their opinion. And they've been complaining about it on several message boards, forms, whatever you want to call them. Not ours. <laughs> and as such, oh. uh, Greg Farshti, having noticed this, kind of got a little bit, I guess a, good, a proper word would be offended. And yeah. now, several members of several websites found out that he <laughs> saw all this, and so there's kind of a little bit of a rift. This has been a long-going argument between members of all sorts of forms, whether or not Greg should keep on canonizing certain things and whatnot, and whether or not they should just stop it all together, so on and so forth. I think that this entire controversy has a very nice kind of overlooking of an issue with the Bionicle community and their use of it, of anonymity. But that is an overarching theme that we can get into at some other point. But... Bionicle <laughs> autopsy. Anonymity and how it ruined Bionicle. <laughs> I love anonymity. An 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 I love seeing enemies. Yeah. You must not love it that there's much. John good, to there's it. good and bad aspects of it. For example, <laughs> people think that they can just go on any random site and trash talk, and then suddenly they're surprised that, oh, Greg Farsty reads what we say? <gasps> Like, r really? Yeah. Really? So, Is that that big of a surprise? Yeah. Based, yeah. A bunch of people on several different forums have been arguing about this, and there are a lot of Greg naysayers who just absolutely, by any means, do not want him canonizing small trivial things, like the name of a Toa team, or or stinking Lee Khan being a, a Traga set, or so on and so forth. And they mm. really are against it because they feel it overcomplicates things even more so than Bionicle's old story was. Greg's seen this. The name of a Toa team complicates Well, it things. doesn't even matter anymore because there's a new Bionicle coming out. No, 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 no. Don't. No. Okay. You okay. are now the most hated member of TTV. <laughs> <laughs> you just made yourself a public enemy number yeah. one. <laughs> People are going to take that comment and rip on you now. Enemy of the state number one. <laughs> No, the, the fact of the matter is, people like the old canon, yes, even like if it's going away. Yes, I like the old canon, but it's not, he's not making know, a huge I'm, difference by naming know, a what, toy. No, 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 we, we, we understand that. <laughs> yeah, we Viper. understand what you were trying to say, but the, the people won't. Viper, we're here. Um, well, if they don't the understand with, it, that's tough. <laughs> the, the thing with Greg is, because he can't write the serials anymore, the only way the old canon can be kept alive is through this canonization aspect. If, I, don't, I understand why people may not be a fan of certain things. I understand there was a lot of backlash a couple of years back when a bunch of elements were added, like psionics, yep, for instance. Yeah. I, thought wasn't that, a fan of that. I thought that was a perfect 
I thought it was great. To be honest, I thought, I thought it was kind of really. I, 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 I'm not no, on I and off throughout the years. There have been elements of Greg canonizing stuff that people have taken issue with. It's not a new concept. Uh, What's new? Teradax, Am I right? Yeah, right. What's new? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Teradax, especially. I What's, I right, guess the big issue is people seem to have a blanket dislike for canonizing anything and nowadays. And go on, Aldrich. First of all, I'd just like to say, ben, let's give Greg the benefit of the doubt with the whole Teradax thing. He didn't just offhandedly decide that. It was a poll on, on BZ Power, matter of fact. Not that anywhere else. In Bionicle's heyday, asking, which do you want? Makuta's name or the Shadowed Ones? The fans decided. Yeah, it was not on Greg. That is, I still have. Why a, do I not I still have this. a feeling that. Great. I still have a feeling that Teradax would have been either one. Yeah, the it, answer, no matter what, would have been Teradax. Totally, totally. Well, but even you if you did release the Shadow One's name, he'd still get hate. Wait, is, is kind of, one, do you know when that was made? Was that before they said Makuta was a species? That no, it was not. It was after they said Makuta was a species. Okay. And... Which, by the way, Makuta being a species, man, I'm glad that's going to get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of glad that the new yeah. guys just named Makuta. They're, he's just like, yeah, 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 hold, hold the show. Var, did you just say that. retcon? Are you saying that this is retconning the... What the heck? Well, it's to, not to because be, yeah. it's like the whole oh, race man. thing. And now, <laughs> now Matanui and Makuta, well, Pterodax, aren't actually brothers because he's a different species. Viper. That, that that was an aspect I really dis disliked overall because yeah. I felt like the 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 overarching theme of these brothers being separated and one turning against the other was a good theme to have, especially for a higher powered being. Right, it's like a Cain and Abel story, you know? It's classic. Yeah, it's classic mythology. I, I felt that that was a good theme to keep, and I I feel like they kind of undermined that aspect of the story as well as Makuta's character as a whole by making them so uneven and on different playing fields, and right. so unrelated to each other. Yeah, Makuta has no like, connection did, to Mata Nui at all. Yeah, did Mata Nui even know, like, that Makuta existed? I think, like, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 he, he like, did. Like, Mata Nui created several of the Makuta, but, like, it was just kind of, like, Maku like uh, Mata Nui created a bunch of stuff. Like, at no point is Makuta somehow recognized as Mata Nui's brother, or, like, uh, somebody yeah. exactly. Mata Nui. If you want to be quite frank, and I'm going to double-check this now, I believe that Teradax specifically... Du, du, du. Yeah, yeah. Teradax was made by Matt Tanui. So if you want to be really technical, Makuta's his son. I mean, honestly, yeah. So it, it's more like an his, Ultron. Yeah, thing his brother anyway. is Pinocchio. <laughs> well, we should get that later. There are no He's strings on me. On me. <laughs> honestly, Matt Tanui's brother. If you really think about it, it's Trent Crom. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. But th this is. He's, He's a giant brain. Trent Crom was more of a pacemaker. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. Just saying. That's very yeah. true. Now, this is completely off the cuff and whatnot, but back back to Greg. Right. He, BSO1 is your friend, X. <laughs> it is. Okay, I'll get you a link. I'll get you a link. I'll get you a link. Yeah, back to the Greg thing. This is... I'm not sure why it's so prevalent nowadays towards small things like that. I don't know, man. I understand if he's canonizing new elements this late in the ball game. Yeah. But it's just it's just the name of a Toa team to a Kordak, and it's a name that was already used. So I mean, hey. If you Wait, wanna... yeah. who who are the Toa Kordak? Kordak. Lesovix team. Lesovix team. Wait, yeah. Matt, why wasn't Les wasn't that the Toa man guy? Oh my goodness. No. No. This that was no. Lacan's... Kahi, oh, you can right. never say. <laughs> you can never. NEVER tell me that I'm not an expert in any way, shape, or form when you're sitting here doing this nonsensical I, nonsense. I, 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 I fail how to see how Kahi not knowing what he's talking about affects you not knowing what you're talking about. <laughs> I know about. what I'm talking about. I have memory lapses. I, 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 I might not know that, but you still don't know stuff either. We're both on the same level. Oh, field. yeah, like, bring it world. on. Let's see. We'll, we'll oh, bring God, back we Quiz here, the here, here it comes, LJ Kahi. You're all beneath me. Peeing Ka contest. Ka yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, LJ, you dirty casual. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I am a clean casual. Thank you very much. No, I, but yeah, I would like thing to with Greg, Greg has yeah. gone on on the Lego message boards and on numerous people, like ask him to clarify something or confirm something or talk about something, 
he'll say at the risk of being yelled at by certain fans or um yeah like for instance someone asked him hey i hate to keep bothering you with this question but can you finally tell us the nature of the mutorn universe inhabitants brains and greg's like i'd rather not I am already getting screamed at for canonizing things, and I also think that if if every mystery gets explained, Bionicle loses some of its appeal. That's a direct quote at the yeah, end. That, yeah, that's a big... That's a big... Uh, no. No. No, that's not, what, that's not what he's saying. He's... What he's saying is he doesn't want to say it because he doesn't if he get did, hate. he just gets screamed he, at. He doesn't yeah, want he, the backlash from other fans. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah I, you can really tell how tired he is of all the crap that he keeps having to deal with in the Bionicle community. It's it, it's like he, he's kind of been put into a corner here because, like, people expect him to answer their questions no matter right. what. Right, and that, he that, isn't even that, That's his purpose. Anymore. And A lot of people don't yeah. know that, too, because a lot of kids, like, if you go on the Lego message boards, you know, that answer just gets pushed down every couple pages or so. You just – how many kids read up on all the questions before they ask one? Yeah, there's he's, people who ask getting, the same right. questions over and over again, and it's already been answered, and you're like, J read up on what you're trying right, to do. Right, exactly. About. I feel a lot of people still think that he is the fate. A lot of people think he created Bionicle. A lot of people no, think that but... he is still involved with this year's story, even though he's they, they said he's not writing the books, and he's right. only consulting. Yeah. It, but yeah, it, it's a shame, though, because like, yeah. like I said, he, they, they, they've kind of pushed him into a corner where he's kind of forced to answer stupid questions like that, and then... When he does give an answer, he gets backlash for answering it. Like, what exactly do you expect this guy to do? It, it, he, he th th this is he's here to answer your questions. If you don't like the answer, well, let's stop asking stupid questions. Yeah, yeah it, I, it makes me sad. Obviously, people want to know because yeah. they keep asking. I mean, okay, I'm gonna yeah. play devil's advocate here and say that the people that dislike the answers they're getting are not the same people that ask the questions. Uh, I disagree, I actually. No, I feel like there's a lot of actual leading questions, and these are actual leading questions where they try to right, get Right, but they're, they're not exactly the same people. Like, the people that complain yeah, about it are separate from the people the that get the answer. There, there are a few there, of them. There is there some overlap, but, like, I get why some people would be like, I mean, just devil's advocate here. I don't think it's a good practice at all. But some people are like, hey, uh, I didn't ask for this, and now somebody else is asking a stupid question, and now this is part of a canon I have to deal with now. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. That is true. I, I can see how some people might be frustrated with that, right. where they didn't want to know, and now they do know. But, I mean, it's not like they had to go look up the answer, either. I think, like, at this point, the Bionicle canon is, like, you know, it's it's reaching its its end point, mostly. There is a, there's a reboot right. coming. There, there's no new things coming to this canon, so the only thing that can be talked about now are secrets that were priorly there that are now going to be revealed. That's right. really the only new content out of the old canon coming out. So... Like it or not, you're going to get a few facts that you probably didn't want to know if you're going to keep looking into it. Right. And the Bionicle community has had a fascination with uncovering the mysteries and finding out the answers and getting confirmation for so many things over the years. It's become a staple. It's become ingrained within the fabric of the community because Greg I mean, was kind enough to grace us with his presence over the years. It can be a double-edged sword, but that's how the community is. And, and like, it, it's... It's understandable how that would kind of affect the community because, like, I mean, Bionicle is a line that is based around mystery. Like, that is the right. big draw and, of the line is that there's a lot of secrets and you need to understand them. Well, let's also be fair that, like, it is Bionicle by its very nature, by being the line it is from Lego, has a lot of creative fans. A lot of people that take the creation very seriously. It's not just exactly. people that just enjoy what they build. Like, you know. Not to bury other fans, but you know, like, if you're part of another fandom and you're not necessarily involved in creating, then you don't have the same kind of disconnect or the same kind of, like, you know, investment in what you've created. A lot of people have had their own head cannons built over the years. And I, I, th I think that is actually very – the main reason why the Bionicle community is how it is, why it's so uh, – I guess not necessarily negative, but in many aspects very – uh. Hostile. Headstrong, very, right. very my way or the highway kind of thing, because it is based off that foundation of creation. Everyone wants to create their own ideas. The mass creation. Le 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 Lego yeah. as a company is all about making your own story, making your own characters and that kind of thing. And a lot of people like to take the actual canon aspect and make it their own in a way. Right. So, so when when you do have some established canon in your mind, like Makuta, for example, Makuta is Matanui's brother. He's that secret evil being that turned against his brother and suddenly that headcanon is kind of changed 
that kind of changes a major aspect of what you had perceived as bionic. Kind of what you enjoyed too. Like for I know for as a creative person myself, and I know a lot of us here are creative, <laughs> that kind of that really like having something that you that you want having you're invested in, having that change on you is kinda of like taking a, a part of you away from yourself. You know, it's like it's right. That's it's you're more invested as a, you're not just watching something. You're part of creating this world. Like you're part of this kind of environment. Exactly. And like 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 we were saying, like since this is so build your own story, make it your own, having something taken out of you, out of your control, that is a big thing. Because the whole idea is that you're making this your own. It's your your story. It's in your control. And the fact that there's aspects of it that you have no control over that are changing that you might not necessarily like is a very negative thing. Right. It, so yes. it makes it obvious like people want to express that they do not like this this idea, th these changes. On the flip side, though, after playing Devil's Advocate for like the past like ten minutes, that does not excuse people for back, you know, doing this backlash thing against Greg, making him to the point where he's just, he's just kind of, he's feel. I mean, it just seems like he's kind of wary of all this stuff and wary that he has to watch everything he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't. It's but very there's... evident in this quote. Uh, someone asked, uh, "In Tales of the Masks, the first book you ever wrote for Bionicle." Onua Nuva and Tarago Winua encountered a large, pale, tentacled worm Rahi in the depths of Onuwahi. In Challenge of the Hordika, Kraka assumes the form of a large, pale, tentacled worm Rahi to fight Rudaka. Was Kraka imitating a member of the species encountered by Onua and Winua? And Greg replies with, At the risk of being vilified on certain fan sites, yes. Easy power. <laughs> I, Eurobricks too sometimes. Uh, yeah, Eurobricks too. Yeah, see, it's it's all community members. That just makes me so you know kind of upset because he can't even express like his own ideas and confirm his own like I know he didn't create Bionicle but he writ the majority of the story. Yeah, but at this point, Bionicle as the old universe is fully under his control now. It right. is his creation at this point. And like he, he might not even... have started it, but he has the the rights to After it. After the end and the. Oh. The canon story is his, right. so it is a little. Is it's a shame that people want to take that. Yeah, from him. and when he, when he does do stuff from him, they yeah, exactly. They're taking his control from him, and that that is an issue I find with the Bionicle community, and it seems like there is a lot of elitism. Yeah, in this community, in that sense, filthy casuals. And, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is a shame. But I mean, it it's not—it's not just like any one subsect or fan site, or just even the entire community as a whole. But there's an attitude among a lot of members, and no matter where you come from, that's just kind of like. Yep. And you know, again, yeah. it's the nature of having a toy totally like Lego and being a fan of something like Lego and being a fan of creating yeah. your own story, which is part of the Bionicle experience. When, yeah, when creativity is such a a mainstay and like the the bone. Of such a line like the this, backbone. that is kind of just yeah, the backbone. That is kind of just how things are, and it's a little unfortunate, but at the same time, it does right. make the Bionicle community very unique in a sense. But it, it it's it's just just a shame that we're all so critical of everything. Yeah, yeah. it's like there, there's very few times where it seems like everyone is all together, just building and enjoying themselves. It seems like there's always someone out there who just has to criticize something. It's like, dude, just relax a bit and just kind of enjoy something for what it is I, honestly, the, best, I... the, the, the best content of that that I feel <laughs> happened recently was at the VIP event at New York Comic Con yes that was amazing that was so fantastic that was fantastic I, that, I have never had an experience like that but basically what happened was we were at the VIP panel building Legos and stuff right because they said you could take everything we, home for you know people yeah, don't know that yeah we, we, we got to meet so many people from around the world some people from Eurobrick some people from Rush Bionicle right. we got to meet the BZ Power staff we even had to talk with DV and it, it was so Six, enjoyable. Uh, you kind of, every, like, like, you know, people with Retinance was there. Uh, Tom Metry Defender was there. Uh, Zaf. Zaf was a great guy. We walked with him. Shout out to Zaf. Shout out to Zaf. Zaf, <laughs> Zaf is awesome. But yeah, it's just like we met so many people there. We, we got to talk to so many people. And throughout the entire event, no one was jaded. No one was uh, angry or critical or anything. Right. We were all just a bunch of fans having fun. And we all helped each other. That too. was the that big, was the thing. big Man. thing. Man. Like, so, like, before. We were all just kind of building, and then Lego made that announcement. Okay, guys, we want to thank you for being here. You get to take home whatever you build today. Literally, everyone in the room stopped talking. There's no sound. We all looked oh, at each other. God, there was a yeah. collective gasp. 
<laughs> around the entire <laughs> room. <laughs> and so like, and so like everyone just went straight to the bucket and started building Jesus, things. Real life. People were asking like, hey, you, you, you got that part? And I was right, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you have a head, you have a seat. I need, uh, yeah, I need yeah, can, Hey, can you help me find or, this? Yeah. Like, yeah, sure, right, right over here. I, I got one purple, right I need here. I changed was... purple piece. I need, I just, anything you wanted, somebody else had. And like, they, they're, they just gave it to you. And then, you know, they, it was yeah. such a friendly at, environment too. Like everybody at that point, was just. At that point, no one was under aliases or anything. No one was behind a computer screen. I think we were all together as fans working together and having fun. And I wish that was how the Bionicle community was online. Yeah, I think right. Shame it's so different. I think it's, it's just the internet culture as it is. It's everywhere. Like you you meet someone in real life, you are not as harsh as you are behind a crew. Right. That is true. I, I think because, like, because if you gathered all the members of these fan sites and put them together in a room with Greg, there would be none of his stuff would yeah, people, happen in real life. People would be, you know, it would be a much more uh, kind of Civil? just friendly environment. People right. forget that Greg is human too. Sorry for quoting Greg. Exactly. <laughs> but so, it, that that that's what I meant by like the. That's kind of what I meant by the an internet anonymity thing. It's because like you kind of forget that you're talking to a person sometimes yeah. when you're when you're like you know replying to oh, things definitely. or posting on our comments you just, or videos. You, really, you don't. You, <laughs> you don't really. You don't really think about okay. This is a person. You know, putting themselves out there, doing their own thing. You kind of just like okay, I don't right. like this. They're, they're, you don't really that. think of a person. They're just a voice uh, on the internet that exists exactly. to make you angry. Like that's all they do. They just make you angry, and you're like, you know what? I'm just I'm tired of this. But you don't think of a lot of people as real people until you you know you meet them. It's just, just kind I, of the nature of the internet. As a content creator on YouTube, for example, like um, we we started the forums recently, and that's been a big thing because before when we were just when we just had YouTube comments. A lot of our view, like our viewerships, our subscribers, those are just numbers. It, it it's really hard to grasp that so many people like we almost have uh yeah we almost have eleven thousand people that are subscribed to us now, and it's like it's hard to really uh see that number and like register that that's eleven thousand people. Yeah, right, that's individuals. To me, that, 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 that's that's a number yeah, of spreadsheets. Individuals. You know, like yeah, that's just a number. But then we started the forums, and now we've got like a bunch of um, dedicated fans who actually watch our content, know what we're talking about, and they want to talk with us, join our forums, and talk with us. That is a completely different thing. Those people are individuals, and it's amazing to think that those people watch our stuff. Right, and uh, one of the big things that happened at New York Comic Con is that we didn't get like, we got maybe like you know maybe six or seven people, well, yeah, around that meeting, yeah, yeah meeting, meeting fans. fans. All right. That's yeah, that was awesome. That's one of you met that, us. Like, I want you to post up in the comments of this video. Yeah, yeah. No, do it. Tweet us. Or, I, I know. Let me see your, let me I see know your Matthew Dean. We took we, uh, we took a picture of Matthew Dean. Um, in fact, if you actually go on BC Power's channel, they've got like a video where they did like a um, a, yeah a panel. Is it the show floor? Uh, yeah, the show floor. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> yeah, they, they, they did it directly behind the lady. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they they did it. They did a tour of the show floor, the uh, Bionicle setup at the show floor. And you, you can see us taking a picture with Matthew Dean in the <laughs> background. Right, exactly. It's actually kind of funny. It's kind of funny. His mom's taking yeah. the picture and stuff. But it's it's funny because I was looking around. I watched that video. It's like, oh snap! I see them. They're right there. And then yeah. I, I look at the comments of that video. And it's just everyone pointing out. Oh snap, look, TTV. TTV, I, like, yeah. TTV right cameo. <laughs> but yep. It's one of those like, things. Okay. And I, I, we met a ton of fans. There were people that you know shook our hands. So I didn't want anybody to miss out on their clear house. So I always was trying to direct people over there because some people had no clue. There was this one guy that wasn't a fan of ours, but he came to the setup where the sets were, and he said, "Bionicle's back, really?" Yeah, no, I saw so many people like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, dude, I, I remember that. And I, like, there was a, there was like one guy who was like, "Holy crap!" I didn't know this was coming back. I still got the old ones all hanging up in my closet. Yeah, no, I remember like, that guy. Man, so does everyone. <laughs> yeah. It's everyone's dirty secret. That's the only thing Jordan Paxton said. He was like, I asked him like, "What do you what do you expect when you announce Bionicle is coming back?" And he said, "A lot of excited twenty five year olds." And <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah. I think all the people. I don't the turn 25 panel. for two months yet. <laughs> oh, we still got some time. I think all the people at the panel were like on the older side of things. Right, right. I, I, less, yeah, a lot of like. You know, Practice. I, I would say pre most like 80 percent of the people there were older. Yeah, I mean it's just teenagers by, by or nature, adults. Like it's not just being a Bionicle fan going out and buying a set. Like you had to go to New York 
and generally, exactly, you, it's hard to convince your parents to go out to New York. Lo- yeah. yeah, unless you live there in New York right, already, right. I doubt many kids are going to be there. Yeah, so that is kind of a thing that's by nature. But I do want to say something. Like, I'm a big fan of Rooster Teeth, and they brought this up recently. That like, for us, if we if we had uploaded the video and we got seven people, seven views on that video. We delete it. We'd be like, something's wrong with this video. It was like it's it's malfunctioned or it's just a terrible video. Right? Yeah. We're gonna take like, that down. Okay. But we, we do that now. Actually, yeah. we, we look at our like Chima our Chima videos and like they, they only have like seven hundred views and we're like, oh, that's that's pretty crappy. I mean, look at Tahu. He's got thirty five thousand. Right. And but then it's just like it's just seven people that we met. That's honest. That's a huge. It's number. a huge number for like for me like that. The fact that seven people are that engaged in our stuff that they would come by. The the like they, they recognize right. us like one dude one dude walked by us uh, or walked by me and he was like holy crap are you Vardaran <laughs> and I was like huh, yeah I am yeah, the dude was, <laughs> like that was one guy yeah, right that was one, one guy dude. but that was massive that was so great that the other guy who faced one up, dude walking girlfriend. past me knowing who I was that was crazy and then like and another guy came up to me and it was you know he had, there, there's like this guy and his friend uh they were with us when we when we were talking to him during Paxton but yeah like he. It was just this kid, and he had a friend that was also coming for a ride. Yeah, I uh, remember that. The dude, the dude and his girlfriend, remember? Like, a dude came up, and he introduced himself to us, and he, you know, shook our hands. And, like, we started talking to him, and, like, and then, like, his girlfriend was just kind of, like, in the background, kind of, like, you know. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, can, we, yeah. can we move on now? Yeah, like, you know, like, <laughs> all this stuff again. Something to do. Who, are, who are these people that you keep talking to? But yeah, like, it was oh, just crazy. And the, but it's like the, Part. one guy can make a big difference in person. But when you look at our video, it's like 700 views. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. That's 700 Seven, people, right? 700 people that well, sat you, down and watched your stuff that know who we are. You, you, right. And you would good. think – and YouTube only actually counts the people that stick around too. Like it, it only counts a view if you watch the entire video or at least a, a, a good threshold. Threshold. There's, There's a special. For the yeah. view right. Count. So it's like – even more people probably watched it. They just clicked off or something. But that's 700 people that sat down and actually watched the video and listened to us talk. And yeah. you'd think, wow, that's amazing. I can't believe 700 people. But really, it's just, wow, yeah. it's a 700 it people. It was me playing it on replay the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to thank all 11,000 fans. Takuma, 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 my mother, Takuma, Takuma. <laughs> yeah, it's like the internet, the internet culture... There's a certain belief that you know people are just a statistic and stuff, but it's, it's right. Really you, just, you just do talk uh, thousands, believe, hundreds, and thousands of people. I believe the brain the can only care, like remember how you can only be friends with two hundred people. So right, just you can only imagining ten thousand right. people is just mind blowing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm so, I'm yeah. Sorry, you hear that? A very, to... very small portion of you guys will ever be our friends. Exactly. Oh, only two hundred oh, no, of you. Two, only two hundred <laughs> of you are true fans. All the rest of you are filthy oh, casuals. No. Oh well, wait a minute. How many yeah. other uh, there's seven of us here? Two hundred people. That's like uh, fourteen hundred total. So if everybody picks one cast member <laughs> yeah, to be a friend pick to, one favorite. Yeah, yeah, you can exactly. pick one then, person. Right. Nope. There you yeah. go. Be LJ's friend. But um, but don't. You might want to talk to your other subscribers. Make sure you're not picking the same person. Because right. Exactly. <laughs> we we need to set yeah. up yeah. topics. To and make like a we need to, we need to have like lists or spreadsheets or something. Right, exactly, we we'll have a spreadsheet, and then we we can only choose fourteen hundred of our fans out yeah. of the eleven thousand we have. But um, I'm probably gonna get all the people who want to give me counseling for cannibalism. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's okay. It's a cool, well, what's wrong? But to to kind of bridge that back to like just Greg. statistics and everything, Greg. Yeah, so it, it's it's a it's really cool in a positive way where you can meet people in person and be like, holy crap, you're a friend of a fan of us. But um, then there's also the negative aspect where it is just an overwhelming statistic. It's just a bunch of people. And when there is vocal negativity, it starts to build up. And it's really hard to differentiate the negatives from the positives. Mm. For example, when there's a large vocal minority, it's just a big group. And usually the positive people aren't very vocal. Right. Like if they don't have a problem with something, why would they say anything? Exactly. They're exactly. just gonna keep watching. That's so why, it's like, like if you ever hear like a site making a giant change or something, you get a large amount of people, no matter what, who are angry at it. Because the people who are happy with it don't have a problem with it. They don't say anything. But the people who yeah, are not happy, they cause a huge fuss. So no matter what you do, you get a you know a huge thing of people going against it. Exactly. Just, even though it's an even break of people who like it, and people who don't like it, the people who don't like it complain about it. You know. And th- that's something we have to deal with all the time. Like we've got eleven thousand subscribers, and. Yeah, that's 11,000 people who, for the most part, probably aren't that, you know, they, they don't really have a problem with what we do. But then you've got like 10 maybe, like a, like a handful of people who 
are out to just get us. It seems. Some, I mean, like, they, it's just a negative. It's not just individual yeah, people too. They, it's just like a, an aura of negativity. Stuff. Yeah, it's just like an aura of negativity. It's a small aura too, but of that, of those people, they're usually pretty vocal about it. And then you start seeing that kind of spread to other sites, and it starts getting really, really demotivating. It kind yeah. of takes the fun out of things. But when you think about it, you still have like 11,000 more people who are still very much satisfied. But you don't really think that way. And I feel like this is kind of how Greg is feeling right now, where like he's got a very vocal minority of people who are kind of critical of what he's doing right now. And those are the only people saying stuff. Those are the only comments he's reading at the moment, and because of that, it's giving him very negative impression of what he's doing right now, and I, and that that's a little unfortunate because he has, you know, he he has very clear passion for what he's, he's doing. He still too. loves Bionicle. You know, he's still like he's in the same boat with the fans, where he is a creative person. It, it's like it's not like that's taken away from him, but he just unlike the fans. If you write a fan fiction, you don't have all these people on fan sites berating it. You know, right. So, and it really sucks because there's no solution to it either. The only solution would be to stop answering questions. Right. Which and is even then, exactly. you could for the fans to stop being exactly. so creative. Exactly. Even, which is even then, solution. there would still be something no matter, because... It doesn't matter how you cut the cake, as you always say, it's mm-hmm. going to hurt him. Like, it, yeah. they, they're still going to give him hate for it, which is... Because these people, I, I don't think it's... It was it was one thing for the last couple of years, people disliking specific things like I don't like that psionics is an element or that Makuta is a species, etc. etc. That's fine. It seems now it's just a more of a blanket dislike for right. colonization. I, whatever, people whatever want the old do, canon to like stay stay how it is. They don't want it to change anymore. Now. But the only solution for that <laughs> is to Greg to stop. So. I, I have an idea. No. What's your idea? <laughs> okay, well, actually, I, I have two things. First of all, we may be totally reading into this right now, and Greg's absolutely totally fine rolling in the Legos, being able to walk up the hill and see all the sets right, for next year. Right, right, right. And we are just totally reading into this. Total possibility. Two, if we aren't, and all of this is some validity to it, you know what would make my day? Mm bunch of people coming in and thanking me for all the work that I've done in the past decade. Not not spam. Just polite thank you letters. Yeah. Right. Wink, wow. wink, nudge, nudge. Could, could nudge, be. nudge. Maybe putting that idea out there. Mm. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. It, it, it's kind of a shame because, like, like we established Bionicle as a whole, the community is a little more critical because we're all, we are so creative, which is like Mesa put it, a double-edged sword. It can be good. It can be bad. Well, not can. And, it is good and it is bad. There's no yeah, can about right, it. Right. By now, it's, yeah, it is good and bad. It is good. It is bad. But it's just a shame that there's so many times where we're kind of just more critical than positive. And I wish that more often we could be sort of like that VIP party. And I know that's a bit more utopian and idealistic than uh, possible, but... It is a shame. After I mean, yeah, being in that, that atmosphere, it's a bit tough to go back to the cynical right, fan right, community. Right, exactly. The, 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 the cynical like, fan community after that atmosphere is a very big, notable difference. It was difference. such a bright spot, like, in, in, in my experience of the Bionicle community. This is the Lego community as a whole. It was such, like, a... It, it's like, you know, you we went somewhere, and this was the best environment I could ever hope for. It was... Uh, right. With I mean, the, I, I remember leaving the party. We were walking home with Zach, yeah. and, like... We we were just we had smiles on our faces. I was, I was we were just talking about how away. awesome it was, and I mean, Z- like Zat's staff member in BZ Power, and everyone seems to think that we hate BZP. So it's Hello. like, I mean, that just goes to show you. It's like, <laughs> it's wow, cool. here we are having such an awesome conversation with. Wait, I would just, <laughs> yeah, what just do I people. chop liver? Just people. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, uh, you know, Takuma. Uh, sorry, Takuma, I you forget that you're BZP <laughs> staff yeah. too. But. <laughs> I mean, you put it yourself. You're, uh, never mind. <laughs> Wait, he's chopped liver? He's eating himself? He's- well, no, I don't say he's a worthless peon. But- oh. Ouch. Ouch. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? Man. man, that is some. I mean, we should get HR on this. What? <laughs> HR? <laughs> HR. <laughs> I said HR. I didn't say HR. I could say HR. You said, yeah, you said HR. HR. I said HR. No, you didn't. I did. Now it just sounds like he's saying a chart. <laughs> a chart. Okay. 
<laughs> but yeah, basically, Greg feels a little. It seems it per, we perceive that he's feeling a little upset, and that's upsetting. Well, to be fair though, the last time we also perceived something, we had to clarify it at the beginning of this episode. So oh, very true. Let's, let's make this clear. We we don't we have not talked personally to Greg. We don't know what's going on. We well, don't know his personal feelings. We have feelings. talked personally to Greg, just not, not about this. Okay, fair, fair enough. We haven't talked uh-huh. to Greg about this, <laughs> but that's another. It's another funny thing, actually. Yeah, because uh, someone actually asked Greg if he would do another interview with us. Yeah, that is which funny. And by the way, just putting that out there, we, we're totally down for that. Just I'm not sure like when the best time would be, right. but yeah. Yeah. It, but like, he, and he was like, uh, "Yeah, sure, I would totally do it." But it's like, I I would imagine they would want to focus on. New Bionicle. I don't know why they won't talk to me. Uh, that, 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 that's how it came off. It was like, oh, Greg. You know, you know, okay, first of all, Greg wrote the first books I ever read, so totally I'd be down for that. Second of all, there is a recording that we have that has not been publicly released. It was before we started the interview with Greg. Right. And we, we, were, we were like all joking around, and I mentioned to Greg how I had all the books like to the right of me. And everyone else is like, you're such a freaking nerd, LJ. <laughs> what a nerd. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, he's just a man of good taste. Oh. <laughs> and like, I, I, one of these days, I want that recording to see the light of day. But after Put that. Put it on skit. Yeah. And before people, <laughs> and before we release that recording, people say Greg is narcissistic. <laughs> 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 he gets more criticism. Uh, okay, before. maybe I shouldn't release the recording. <laughs> But it happened. It happened. It's like Greg said I was a man of good taste. The others didn't say that. Greg did. I'd totally be down for talking to him again. Yeah, Greg's Greg's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. His writing's not perfect, but he's a good guy. I mean, nobody's nobody's creative work is perfect. That's that's the big thing we have to get down. We we berate Ruby all the time uh, on the comedies and stuff. Uh, Ruby's Uh, Monty's Monty's clipping. Monty's like that. But I am the one of the biggest fans of Monty Ohm out there, and it was I met him at RTX, and it was one of the greatest like honors of my life. Just to, yeah, you, you, you know so that's why, why I've cr- been trying to make the well, like you go first, like. You know why you criticize it, right? Because you care for it. That's right. why yeah. you want exactly. it to get exactly. better. It has such an like an impact on me, like Monty's work, and even Greg's work has such an impact on me as a kid. And like he that's he the- answered all my questions when I you know back when I was like fourteen, and on Busy Power and just PMing him like random stuff that I thought of. And that's why I've been saying this whole time, criticizing and not liking elements of the work is not the problem. Right, yeah, it's, it's not... It's the over, overwhelming blanket distaste that we've been seeing. And it's right, how, it's not just right. individual stuff like, oh, I just don't personally like that. It's just an attitude of, like, whatever you do, I'm just against it. I don't want anything to yeah, change. Yeah, Another thing that contributes to that is repetition, too. It's like some people, like you mentioned kids, don't like to read up and actually look at comments. Like, I know, like, for example, in our videos, people will <laughs> criticize something, and then another person will say that as if we didn't already get a comment on that. And then people people like, say in the for the in the comments for the previews, how did you get these sets? Yeah, it's well, like, yeah it's a like lot of ask, it, it, We literally says New York Comic Con version, and yeah, we literally say it at the start of the video. We put it in the description. We put annotations. It's like, come on, people, let's let's try to read a bit. Let, let's just take a second before you make a comment and just try to get the answer yourself right and, uh, don't be a filthy <laughs> casual the moral for this episode since we're about to close is read stuff cut don't greg some slack lego community's good irl and don't be I'm filthy gonna, casual <laughs> i'm gonna censor this but also moral of the internet don't be a yes. <laughs> there you go true I, that okay. that is the lesson that you need to we need to leave this on don't be an Okay, okay. All right, all right. I got it. No, right? no, no, no. Kahi, don't mess it up. Don't. Walk we back. have a perfect Ninjago ending here. We all have to laugh and then fade to black and credits. Ha, 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 <laughs> this has been TTV episode 119 very informative talking about the Vahi Greg and our New York Comic Con experiences uh, we do have some more stories from New York Comic Con that we will be telling in the upcoming weeks or week depending on how things go stay tuned for that but for now 
Thank you all very much for watching, and please be sure to like, favorite, rate, comment, share, subscribe, etc., and join on the message boards, too. And criticize. And criticize, yeah, no, yeah, please. Be sure to criticize us. But know that if you criticize, I'm totally going to respond to you. Oh. Yep. You're not escaping from oh, me. Ouch. <laughs> wow, Kai. You're not escaping. Well, Kai. I will respond. Wow, Kai. Waff -afk. He's we vicious. We are fans. Fans are filthy. <laughs> <laughs> vicious Va. He will destroy you. Waff -afk. Yep. Yeah, I mean you're putting that comment out there. I will, I will, I will respond. Thank you all for watching. I'm messing it. <laughs> I'm Barter and I'm LJ. I'm Kahi. I'm Viper. I'm Takuma. And we will see you all next time for the next exciting episode of the TTV podcast. See you later, Goodbye. filthy casuals. <laughs> we are fans. Fans are filthy casuals. I'm joking. Casuals. See ya. There we go. I think we should just refer to our fans as filthy casuals from now on. Yeah. <laughs> we, wow. should, we, we should also no, no. refer to us as filthy casuals, too, just to, like, make sure no. all right. are let's desync. No, the, yeah. you, you know the topic on the message boards of what, what Bionicle fans should be called? Dude, casuals. I was just <laughs> thinking about that. Let's uh, sing, let's sing first. I, I was thinking that, too. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, let's sing. I'm, I'm going to comment that. Are you... All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Sink. sink.